Hey guys, welcome back. So now we're gonna talk about color space. Now I know when a lot of people hear the word color space, they wanna run and hide because it can be a very scary topic, but don't worry, I've set up some fun visualizations for you and this video is just gonna be more of an introduction to the concept of color space and where we need to know about it when compositing. So let's just start off with what a color space even is. So a color space is just an arrangement of the specific colors that an image or a device can capture or display. And if you think about it, this kind of makes sense. You have monitors, cameras, TVs, film projectors, all of these different devices are gonna either record or display colors a little bit differently from each other. So a color space is just how we identify what those specific colors are. And a good example I like to use is with cameras. So right here, I've simulated three different cameras and each one of them is filming this guy right here, this little doggy. So this first one, we've got a red cinema camera. This second one, we've got a black magic camera like the one I have. And lastly, we've got an Airy Alexa camera, which is one of the most common cameras used in film today. So each one of them is filming the exact same image, yet the result from these three looks a little bit different. Each one, the colors are a little different. So what these camera manufacturers have done, each one of these companies, is they've done tests with their cameras and they've identified the specific range of colors that these cameras can capture. And a color space is how you can visualize those specific colors. So if we go down here, I've actually made a little visualizer for these three cameras color spaces. So if we click on this, we'll go into 3D space and we'll see these three cameras color spaces. And as you can see, they're each a little bit different from each other. This red wide gamut one here from the red cinema camera can see a lot more greens than these two cameras can. So this is why it's called a color space. It's a representation of the colors in space. And in this context, we're looking at the colors in 3D space. Now you might be used to seeing them in 2D space. And what that would look like is something like this. If I pull this slider down, it's gonna take away the third dimension and we just see them as these little triangles. And now if I click this little chromaticity diagram, and I'm just gonna turn on these two other guys too so you can kind of see, this might be how you're used to seeing color spaces, specifically sRGB here. This is one of the most common color spaces. It's the color space of your monitor and pretty much every other image on the internet. So you're probably wondering what this little chromaticity diagram is. I'm not gonna go too much into detail of it and how it's created, but it's basically the color space of human vision. So these scientists literally almost 100 years ago now figured out all the colors that the average human could see and they mapped those colors in 3D space. And this is what they got. If you look up color space online, you'll actually see something that looks just like this. And yeah, this is exactly what we see, the chromaticity diagram. And this one is showing sRGB like we just talked about. And the reason we look at color spaces of devices within this color space of human vision is because human vision is the most important thing when it comes to digital media and cameras and monitors and everything like that. Because at the end of the day, they're always gonna be viewed by humans. So we wanna identify what greens and reds and blues a human eye can see, and then what greens, reds, and blues, and every combination of in between certain devices can see. But why does any of this matter? We have our different color spaces. Why do we need to know them? Well, let's go look at a practical example, and it's a shot that we did before in the bit depth section, which by the way, quick little aside, these color spaces here also have their own bit depths and dynamic range. So I wanted to just contextualize that a little bit because we've been talking about bit depth and dynamic range channels and the RGB color model, all this stuff, all of it works together. They apply to color spaces as well. So for example, if I go in here, if I hit control enter and I put my little bit depth converter tool down and let's just set it to four bits, you can see it affected the result of the color space. Now there's less colors available within all these color spaces. If that's a little bit too abstract, don't worry about it. I just wanted to mention that everything we're talking about in these sections all works together. They're all attributes of images. So if we go back down here, if you remember this shot, we wanted to composite this image behind this image. The images look a little bit different now. I'm actually gonna turn my viewer to raw so we can just see what they actually look like with no color affecting it. This is what the images look like in the color space that they came in. So this image is in sRGB color space. That's kind of why it looks normal. sRGB usually looks normal to the human eye. 
but this one was shot on a red camera and it is in the red wide gamut color space, similar to what we just saw above. And it's also in a logarithmic color space, which makes it look all washed out. We're gonna talk about that in the next video, but let's look at these color spaces in 3D for a second. Here we go. And we can, this time we see the exact colors in the image mapped in 3D as well. So this is why color space is so important. We're gonna be compositing images that come from different color spaces all the time. And as we can see here, they have different color spaces and what the full range of these color spaces is called is a gamut. So this red cinema camera has a much larger color gamut than this sRGB image meaning it can produce more colors. So if we wanna see that visualized, let's go into this grade node and split out the gain. And let's just increase the green amount on the sRGB image. And we'll go up to four. And I'm just gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep cranking this. Notice how it keeps just getting closer and closer to this corner. I'm in the 30s now. And I'll just tell you, spoiler alert, it's not gonna go outside this range. So when we have an sRGB image, the colors that it can produce are limited by the gamut of that color space. And it's the same with this red color space. If I go in this grade node and I start pumping out the green, you can see it gets closer and closer to its corner. And we can keep going there. And right now it's so green that our monitor can't even display the colors. It's just clipping at the greenest green it can produce. And that's because our monitor is also in sRGB. So the second this green color passes this threshold, it just clips at this color. And I can keep going up and it's just gonna get closer and closer back there to that green. So this is gonna be a problem when we're compositing. If certain color spaces can produce colors that other color spaces can't, how are we gonna be able to accurately composite them together? And not only that, it's a problem because things can look correct when they're not. So if we look at this example over here, I've set up those exact same two color spaces and I've plotted these three colors in 3D space. And if you could look, the images look exactly the same, right? But if we look at the images side by side and we sample the values, this one on the left is just has one in each one of the channels. And this one over here has kind of random values in the channels, but they look the same. Well, remember how I said our monitor is an sRGB space. So it just gets clipped at its maximum luminance when there's a value of one. And so each one of these channels has a value above one. So it, they just look exactly the same, but I can turn the saturation down and you'll see that they are actually different colors. If that's kind of hard to tell, come into this script and look for yourself. But this is actually something that's very common in not even individual VFX artists who don't know anything about color management. This happens at studios all the time. I've been on projects where I was given some shots and I composite them and it looks good on my screen. I send it to the client who views it on maybe a higher dynamic range monitor and they're messing with the colors and then it looks bad and it looks unintegrated. And they're like, what the heck's going on? And it's all because we were working with mismatched color spaces. So what is the solution to this? I kind of hinted at it just now, but we need to work with a unified color space. We need our images to be in a world where they can have all the same colors. So this is where ACES comes in. ACES is a color management system that allows us to unify multiple image color spaces into one single color space. Now, if you're coming from the intro to Nuke video, we did something in our preferences, in our project settings actually, that sets up ACES in Nuke. So it does it for us. So if you didn't watch those videos, I'm just gonna show it real quick. If we're just hovering over our node graph, we can hit S, go to the color tab, change color management to OCIO, and then change the OCIO config to ACES, and you can really use any of these, but if you're going into these scripts and downloading them, you're gonna be needing to use this last one right here. By default, it's set to nuke and nuke default. And that is working in a space where there is no color management. And some studios actually still work that way and they're gonna run into a lot of problems. And just to preface this, you can work and composite two images together without working in a unified color space. People have been doing it for years. You just have to rely more on your eye. And if a shot looks good, it looks good. But working in a unified color space makes things so much easier. So let's see what that looks like. So if I go to this setup here, I've got three color spaces, three images. 
This first image is in sRGB color space. The second one I shot with my camera, my Blackmagic camera. So it's in the Blackmagic color space. And then we have this footage from that same short film that I worked on using the red cinema camera. And I've also mapped the colors and you can see the colors all exist in different worlds right now. If we were trying to composite these together, we'd have a really difficult time. So what ACES does is it converts each one of these color spaces into a single color space. And the ACES color space we use in VFX is called ACES CG. And so what that would look like when it converts these color spaces, I've done a little animation here. If you move this slider, you'll see it literally transforms these color spaces into a new color space. It squeezes them until we get into ACES CG. And now you can see all the colors exist in the same world. If I hit Control Z and go back, you can actually see the images even look a little bit closer together even because now the colors are in the same world. Now that doesn't mean you're just gonna be able to composite one over the other and it's gonna look like it's shot in the same set but it makes things a lot easier when it comes to color. We'll still have to worry about dynamic range and stuff like that. Like I said, these are 3D color spaces and you can see this image has really bright values that go way high up here. So this is what ACES does. Now let's look at how it works practically when we're compositing a nuke. So let's go back to that same shot. These two guys, we've got two different color spaces and we need to composite these images together. How do we get them from these color spaces to ACES CG to where they're living in the same world. So this one, we're gonna put down an OCIO color space node. And this is the node that's gonna allow us to convert this to ACES CG. So I said it's an sRGB image. So we're just gonna change it from its default to sRGB texture and we get this. All right, so now we've converted it from sRGB to ACES CG. And they, they're gonna have all these weird names, don't worry about it. That's honestly one of the most confusing things about color space is there's a million names for everything and there's so many names that mean the exact same thing. So it's really just important to understand concepts right now. So let's do the same thing for this image. And the input color space is the color space that's coming in. And I know this was shot on a red camera and it was shot in a logarithmic format. We're gonna talk about logarithmic format and linear format in the next video, but it basically just refers to how the luminance of the image was handled. So for right now, we just wanna change the incoming color space to red log. So it's red wide gamut and it's in log format. And there we go. Now our images colors are living in the same world. So let's look at what the finished shot looks like as you've probably already seen, and we can put one of these viewer processes on. Now notice in this shot, I don't have those OCIO color space nodes anywhere. Well, that's because since we set up these project settings, Nuke actually tries to do this for us inside the node. That's what this input transform here is. When you bring an image into Nuke, it will try and detect the color space and do that transformation to ACES CG for you when you have proper color management set up. So if I actually copy this path and hit R, paste it and open it, you can see it has it set to this color space by default. I didn't even have to put this OCIO color space node down. And it's doing the same thing with this image over here. So now all we need to do is some very minor color corrections to this background. It was just a little bit too blue. And then I just shifted it to be more green. And then I threw it out of focus and boom, done. Super simple shot. And if these images weren't converted to ACES CG, this could have been a lot more difficult to integrate the color. So yeah, that is it for color space. But the main takeaway from all this that I want you to understand is that different images will have different color spaces. And when we're compositing, we wanna composite with them all in the same color space while we work. And then when we're done compositing, we can convert our result into whatever color space we want, depending on where it's gonna go. And that's something we're gonna expand more on in the next video, as well as linear and log. So I hope this all made sense. Be sure to come into the script and play around and figure stuff out for yourself. And I'll see you guys in the next one.